for 3D CD milling, there are some really cool free options out there. This is Desk Proto, and they offer a free version that will let you do some really neat stuff. This is an Indian motorcycle sign that I was playing around with, and I drew this up in Inkscape, pulled it through Tinkercad, extruded it, and then brought it into Desk Proto. I've not cut this one, but I was just playing around with some of the settings on here. Desk Proto has several versions of their software. The first one is this free version I'm playing around with right now. The next version is $195, and that lets you do multiple paths. And as well as this is working, I may end up picking that up because it's pretty powerful stuff. So the Desk Proto is the cam side of the CNC process. For the CAD part for 3D, there are some really cool free options. Um, another one is Design Spark Mechanical, totally free, really powerful, not too hard on system. And resources. in addition to that, is Autodesk 123 Design. This one works really well too. All the buttons are just a little bit different, but pretty intuitive. And then, of course, is Tinkercad, which is extremely basic, and I've used it a lot. In fact, I'm going to use it for the next project here. And this is the shape I just threw together real fast. Again, Tinkercad's pretty useful. I wish it could be used offline, but for a very basic program, it does a lot of cool things, not just for 3D printing. So we've got our curve here, and we've got our curve here, and then we've got where these join. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually works out with the sign foam board. And this is how it looks in Desk Proto. Again, this is free software. This is a free license, at least for their first level. And it's pretty cool. You can do a lot of 2D stuff with this, as well as some simple 3D stuff. These are the first tests with Desk Proto. As far as the step over, Desk Proto had in, in its algorithm a preset step over figure so I did not mess with that too much. I'm going to see where these go to start with and then if you look over on the left hand side you can see a little nub sticking out of the sign foam board and that was end mill number one. When I kicked it all to start the spindle was not on and it snapped off pretty fast. As far as hold downs for this I just used two pieces of double-sided carpet tape and it was strong enough to hold it when that end mill cracked off. So it's not going anywhere. And another thing to figure out is why our calibration's off on the display screen there. So we're just kind of playing around, learning as we go. We can just start to see the bottom of kind of that center hump as the end mill climbs up and over that notch. I've got the shop back on, so we're pulling the dust out of the enclosure. So the ambient noise is a little bit louder. But watching those ball screws engage and move through is really, really cool. Extremely smooth. And I can feel the weight of this CNC as it switches over to the other direction. And feel the chunk. So the whole cut took about an hour and two minutes. Let's see what this looks like inside. We'll go ahead and vacuum this off. See how clean those lines are. I did check the temperature of the motor and it felt very, very cool. So the pump is cooling pretty well. So let's turn on the vac here and clean this up a little bit.
That came out really, really well. Exactly like what we designed in Tinkercad in just a couple minutes of, of screen time. Awesome. I have to try some airplane wings and boat hulls and other other really cool stuff. Thank you.